So welcome everyone. I'm really excited to introduce y'all today to Dr. Laura Patterson Rosa. She is a genetic scientist with Edelon Diagnostics. So I will pass the mic to you. Hi, Dr. Moore. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here again. Um, so today I have this little game sort of played um, on, on the thing to work with the students and I hope everybody enjoys it. Um, and I would really love some feedback from anybody who tries this at home, right? <laughs> so I'm looking forward to see what everybody thinks about it too. So we're going to do a game today that I like to call Build Your Dream Horse, but we're going to make it fancy. So it's uh, based on real genetics for most cases. We do have some traits that are not real genetics, but I put them out there just for fun, right? Um, so we're going to cover a few basic genetic stuff first and then we're gonna go ahead and play the game all right all right so for this um workshop today what we're what we'll be doing is learning a little bit about genetics right um implications of what the genes may cause on a horse we're gonna do a lot on learning on traits of interest and how to select them using the genetics right we're going to learn a little bit about some of the genetic concepts like dominant, recessive, co-dominant. Some of you might actually already know that, but it's always good to double check our knowledge, right? Uh, homozygotes, heterozygotes, and also this fancy term here that is called pleiotropy. We're going to learn what that is. And at the end, I will have you all draw a picture or use your art skills and do um, a figure of the horse that you build using the genetics, okay? It doesn't have to be drawn. It could be a collage. It could be something that you can come up with or a painting, right? So anything. Okay. So knowing the genes help us understand basically the biology of a trait and a disease too, right? A trait, I mean, it is a characteristic of a horse or any animal in this case. So let's say that for this little horse right here, he's a miniature horse or she's a miniature horse. Um, if we look at the traits that the horse has and the characteristics the horse has, we can't really tell a lot about the genetics. We can we can tell some things, but we cannot say if the horse has a homozygote allele for Tobiano or a homozygote allele for black, right? But if we actually look at the genes, we can say that. Um, some of the behavior things too. So we can look at the behavior of a horse and analyze its genetics afterwards and say, oh, you know, it makes sense now that this horse is homozygous for curiosity because I can see that on the genetics. Um, and we're going to talk about that gene too. Um, some of the other things might also cause problems on the horse, right? Uh, and we can use that knowledge to provide targeted treatments for the horse, for example, or um, to improve the selection or eliminate those characteristics that we don't want, those traits that we don't want, or keep them if that's something we want on the horse. So knowing the genetics is really, really important because that's what's going to move forward to the next generation. That's what's going to be passed on to the next generation, right? So like I said, some of the concepts to keep in mind while we're working with genetics is the concept first and foremost of gene. So the gene is um, basically what codifies for different things in the genome. It's like the guidelines on how something on the um, animal or the human or the horse in this case is gonna be working, it's gonna be built right? And within those genes, we have different forms of each gene. So the different form of a gene or, or the different variations of that gene, we can call them alleles, right? So for example, here we have a form of the gene that makes the black pigment. So it's dominant, like I said, dominant and recessive, um, the big E, 
And if the horse has this form of this gene, it makes a black horse. But if it only has the other form of the other allele of the gene, it makes only red pigment, right? So we have here the black, in this case, is homozygote, and the uh, red is, heteros um, is recessive, and it's homozygote, right? So you have homozygote is equal, and heterozygote is different. Okay, and what about codominant? So codominant works in a slightly different way. It's like when you have two versions or two alleles and they have a, a, a fashion in a way that sort of compensates or, or acts together. So in this case, we're gonna talk about the cream. So one cream allele, will cause 1% um, dilution or a half dilution on the horse. And two cream alleles will cause the double of that dilution, right? So we're gonna have double dilution on horses that have two alleles of cream. And what about pleiotropy? So that is when a gene controls for more than one trait. So, or for more than one characteristic, right? So let's say the gene that makes the horses turn gray. So with time, horses end up losing their pigment and becoming gray or white. You know, they, they will turn completely white, but these horses are also more prone for developing melanomas. Fortunately, in horses, melanoma is not as a terrible condition as it is in humans, for example right? But studies have, been, have shown that by the age of 15, give or take, about 70% of the horses will have melanomas, of the great horses will have melanomas. And by the age of 22, 100% of them will have melanomas, right? So it's the same gene, it controls for the two things, both graying out and both making horses have melanomas. All right, now that everybody knows what I'm talking about. Let's get ready and let's build your horse. So we're gonna start out by picking the number one, the base coat color, which is controlled by a gene called MC1R. So MC1R is a melanocortin gene and it controls the black and the red pigment, as you can see on those two horses here, right? So the black pigment is called eumelanin, and the red pigment is called pheomelanin. It's two different types of melanin, right? So when horses have the dominant form of that gene, they can make the black pigment. And when they have the other allele, the other variation in homozygote form, as you can see here, little e, little e, they will only make red pigment, okay? So now you can pick what is gonna be the base coat color of your horse? And you have genes that act on these base coat colors. So you need the presence or the absence of them for these genes to act, okay? And you're gonna see that. So just think about what you like the most and select the one you like, all right? Now, on number two, you have gray. So gray is a very, very in interesting genetic um, caused on the gene STX17. So it's a variation on a copy of that gene. On a little region of that gene has different number of that sequences that will change the, the outcome on the horse, the actual outcome on the horse. So if the horse is, and it acts on, on a dominant fashion too, right? So if the horse has the gray gene, it doesn't matter if it's homozygote or heterozygote, it will turn gray. Okay, so that horse will gray out with time. But if you don't want your horse to turn gray, if you don't want your horse to be white with age, you just select the one that is not gray. Also remember, horses may turn white with time and they will also develop melanoma, okay? All right, let's keep going. So if your horse is black pigment based, you can also choose something here called the agouti gene. 
So agouti is interesting because it only works on black bays. It doesn't work on the red bays. It's not going to show on the red bays, okay? And it changes the body color of the horse to red, but it keeps the mane, the hair right here, the tail, and the legs black. Cool, huh? So this is a very, very old variation. It was found on primitive horses way before we even thought about domesticating them. So agouti is basically primitive, if you think about it. All right, our next one is called Tobiano. So Tobiano is actually a white spotting pattern, okay? So it causes white spots on the horse's body. So these white spots are due to the lack of melanocytes. What happens is that during the embryo formation, the melanocytes don't get to these places, okay? So they will be lacking color on these regions and you can basically draw them or design them as, as you like. Um, Tobiano usually has a vertical distribution so as you can see on this picture, picture here, it's going to go vertical instead of horizontal. It will some, most of the time keep the horse's head colored and have this uh, shield of color on the horse's chest, chest and neck, right? So this is something Tobiano does. Plus, uh, the edges of the white spots will be very, very clear cut. So if you do select Tobiano to, for your horse to have this white spotting pattern, remember those things, okay? When you draw them or you design your horse, there you go. It also works in a dominant fashion. So if a horse has one allele, it means that it could be homozygote or heterozygote for Tobiano. It will have the same phenotype, the same outcome, okay? And if you don't want your horse to be a Tobiano, you select a not Tobiano one. What else? Would you like your horse to have uh, primitive markings? So this could happen on both red and black based horses and bay based horses, okay? So if you select this gene, it means that your horse will have the dorsal stripe right here right? This thing. It will have zebra stripes on the legs, and it will most likely have some lighter hairs, both on the mane and the base of the tail, okay? And some dilution on the body, too. So whatever the color of your horse is, if you have picked a chestnut or um, the red or the black horse, you make it a little bit lighter. Does it make sense? All right, it also works in a dominant fashion, so it doesn't matter if the horse is homozygote or heterozygote. If you don't want your horse to be done, it's going to be little d, little d, okay? What about if I want my horse to have this very, very different white spotting pattern? So probably you guys have heard of this breed. It's called Appaloosa. Um, the actual white spotting pattern, we call them leopard spots. That's why the LP, we call them leopard spots, okay? And I've simplified a little bit of this whole genetics on the LP for you, but this is basically what happens. It's also a pleiotropic gene, so it has two effects. When you have homozygote horses for the LP gene, they will suffer from a condition called congenital night blindness, okay, which means that they cannot see very well in low light environments. So dusk, dawn, dark, they will not do very well in these situations because they can't see really well. It's not a problem for the horse. It's more of a, more of a problem for us because we have to be aware that the horse cannot see us very well and might behave differently because of that, okay? So you've got to be careful with these guys. What also happens is that when the horse is homozygote for LP, it will have what we call a few spot pattern, 
right? So it will not have the nice, fun spots that we see on most leopard type Appaloosas that we expect to see on them anyway. So if you select your horse to be homozygote, remember it's not going to have spots, it's going to have this uh, sort of varnish look to it, okay? What if the horse is heterozygote for LP? Then it's going to have spots of the base coat color, okay? Going to keep the tail and the mane, right? The same color as the base. It will have modeled um, skin on around the eyes, on the muzzle. The, um, the hoofs will be striped as well, so that's kind of cool. Um, so remember all that, and you can select your horse. If you don't want your horse to have the Appaloosa spotting pattern, all you have to do is select the LP, little LP, little LP, okay? What about if we want our horses to have the cream dilution? Yay, this one is fun. So this one is only going to the pan on the base coat color you've selected. So if your horse was red-based, when you have one allele, it means that your horse is going to be Palomino. If you have two, it's going to be a Cremello, and it gonna, it's going to look like this, okay? What if your horse is black-based? Well, you know, cream doesn't act really well on black bases when it's by itself, so if it has just one allele, it's a heterozygote, it means that the horse will be a smoky black. It doesn't really look like it has cream on these guys. It looks like that faded black, like those faded t-shirts that you've washed like 20 times and the black sort of faded away a little. But if it has two copies, if it has two alleles of the cream gene, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be a smoky cream. And if the horse is a bay, meaning it has the agouti on top of the black, it's going to look like a buckskin, all right? A very, very famous buckskin, Spirit from the cartoon. I don't know if you've watched that, but it's one of my favorite cartoons. Guess why? Horse cartoons, right? Why not? What if it has two? It's going to be a Perlino, all right? So remember, one is on the top, two is on the bottom, and you can go from there, okay? I know they look really, really light. They're not white. They still have pigment, okay? Now let's move on to some of the other traits. Let's talk about size. There's actually a test for size, a genetic test for size in horses. Um, scientists have discovered a mutation or a variation on this gene here, L-coral, that is correlated with height. Of course, it doesn't make large small and medium horses, it do, but it does add on a couple inches on the final si size of the horse, right? So let's play around a little with that, and let's say that if you have two alleles, your horse is going to be really big, or the size of a draft horse, like this big guy here, okay? Really tall. If you only have one, it's going to be a medium size, like a quarter horse, Okay, and if you don't have any, it's going to be a pony size, right? So you can select the size of your final horse, your dream horse. What about feathers? So feathers are these hairs around the leg of the horse. Some horses have more, some horses have less. Um, the genetics of those are still unknown. But for the sake of this game, we're going to play around a little and say that we do know them. Um, so if you select the feather phenotype, it's going to be big F, big F, or big F, little F, because it works in a dominant way. And if the horse doesn't have feathers, it's going to be little F, little F, okay? What about the shape of the head of the horse? This is something that's still unknown, but... Um, there are currently scientists looking and researching that, all right? So we might know what makes a horse shape, uh, a horse head shape the way it is. So let's say that you would like your horse to have a Roman nose, 
which means that it would look like this guy here. As you can see, the profile on that horse is very, very distinct, right? It's a Roman nose, how we call it. Or you would like your horse to have a straight face. So as you can see this one here, the profile is very straight, right? Thoroughbreds usually have that kind of profile. Or you would like your horse to have a dished face, like an Arabian horse, like this guy on the bottom. So you can select the genotype that better fits what you would like for your perfect horse. What about ears? We still also don't know what makes up those ears. Um, there are some study on why, some studies on why the ears tipped are tipped inwards, but we're going to make up some of that information here and just play around a little. So if you want your horse to have big ears, it's a dominant trait and you can select big E, big, big B, big B, or big B, little B. If you want your horse to have small ears, they can be little b, little b. But if you want your horse to have the tips um, pointing inwards, so this is a trait on a few Indian breeds and some Brazilian breeds also have a little bit of that, not as extreme as the Indian breeds. So this one is the ear of a Marwari horse. Okay, so they really touch each other. They are so tipped inwards that can, they can actually touch each other. So if you would like that, you can select the big, uh, the B I. You add an I, so it means that it's tipped inwards, and your horse will have ears like that. Okay. What about curiosity and vigilance? So that's an actual test for um, behavioral genetics on horses. Uh, this was a study done on thoroughbreds that has been validated in some other breeds. And basically it is looking at a variation on the gene that is a dopamine receptor. That same gene in humans is responsible for interesting behaviors like novelty seeking or um, liking roller coasters or jumping out of planes, for example, uh, danger behaviors, that kind of thing, in ADHD as well, right? So it's the same gene. In dogs, they found out that variations on that gene might be correlated with aggressive behavior in German shepherds. But in horses, what they have discovered is that this little variation here, having a C or having a gene on that gene, is correlated to behaviors are, that are more vigilant, or it means that the horse is a little bit standoffish, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more um, not as friendly, not as curiosity-seeking behavior. But it's a horse that usually does well by itself. And um, most of the trainers for racing industry, for example, like these guys. And the horses that have curiosity alleles that are homozygote for the G are those horses that are going to be kind of like in this picture. You're going to walk into the pasture and they're going to be in your pocket. They're going to be messing with your, your T-shirt, pulling your head off and playing with you. All right. So you can select and say, I would like a horse to be more like this or more curious the other way around. What about speed? Um, well, if you're a jumper like me, so <laughs> I really, really like jumping. Um, it's something I have been doing since I was probably 14, 15 years old. Um, so for these guys, the favorite genotype is having one of each. But for some of the other breeds, let's say thoroughbreds, it changes slightly, okay? So if you want a horse that's faster on shorter distances, you want a sprinter. So if you want a horse that is faster for longer distances or has more endurance, you want this one here, the TT. Right? For jumpers, what we have observed on or genetic testings with Edelon is that, for example, the jumpers really do prefer horses that have one of each. I don't know why exactly. That's something that still needs some research. All right. 
And let's finalize with selecting if your horse will have this cool trait that's called a curly coat. So it's an actual trait, okay? So this is an actual gene. Um, and it makes the horse's coat, the way you can see here on this picture, curly, like a golden doodle or like a poodle, right? So they have these curly hairs. Um, it acts on a dominant way. So if the horse has one allele of curly dominant homozygote or heterozygote, it will have curly hairs, okay? If you want your horse to look like with a normal sleek coat, it's going to be negative, negative. That's why the N, N, okay? All right, so we have finalized our genotype. Now it's time to draw or paint or come up with your dream horse. Do not forget to take note of all the alleles you selected, okay? You can go back and look at everything again and change whatever you don't like. Feel free to do whatever you want, all right? So this would be my dream horse if I had to draw one for myself, okay? I use some RC skills on the computer because I'm not really good at drawing or painting, but I can do some computer stuff. So it would be what? a bay horse, right, with the ears that are tipped inwards. So can you guys guess the genotype of this one? Maybe. All right, let's take a look at the genotype. So I've selected my horse to be homozygote black just because I wanted. It doesn't make a difference because the, the black base is dominant, right? So the horse does not have the gray allele, so it's not going to turn white with time. It has one agouti allele, so it's going to turn bay, right? So it, it is a bay horse. Does not have Tobiano, does not have done. Does not have the LP. I know I'm boring. I'm very boring with my perfect horse. Does not have the cream. It has one height allele, so I would like my horse to be a little bit taller, okay? Does not have feathers because those are a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, it has a straight profile and the ears there are tipped inwards, short ears, but tipped inwards, see? And it's a uh, heterozygote for both the curiosity and vigilance and the long and short distance. And it does not have the curly coat. So that is my dream horse. Now, what's yours?